Hi guys, I'm Dan from DB Games. Welcome to today's video. We're going to be unboxing this Marvel set for Unmatched and it's got uh, some of my favourites Daredevil, Elektra and Bullseye in it, which is really cool. Um, particularly like Daredevil myself. Um, the TV show is great, of course. And I uh, really can't wait to see what's inside this one. Uh, I'm going to try and do a bit more Unmatched content as well soon with all the stuff I've got behind me. So if you like Unmatched and you want to see some more, then uh, stick with me. Um, let's get this to the table and open it up. So I am really excited to get this one open. As you can see on the front, it's uh, ages 14 plus. It says two to three players, but that's because there's only three characters in this box. Um, it's actually four player if you want to take it up to 2v2. I think you can also do solo, one versus one versus one versus one versus one. Versus one. But I've never done that. Um, I like playing this at two player. It seems to be quite a good battle of wits and uh, strategy and movement, depending on who you're playing. And I can't wait to try these guys out and see what they actually fight like. Hopefully review these and get them onto the channel as well. Uh, get a load of unmatched content up because I know a lot of people are really interested in it, including myself. So here is the Hell's Kitchen rules. Um, these will have some information about the basic way to play. And then maybe some extra stuff if the characters have got some unique things in here, which I don't really fully know yet. So scheming's the same, declaring targets, attacking. Attack and win in the game, yeah, and then combat example. Uh, and then you've got special rules here, which is for this set. So these have all got different things, which you don't see all the time. Like this set page isn't in the Cobble and Fog book, because they don't have a lot of extra stuff. I don't think it is anyway. Um, then so you've got the special things with Electra, special things with Daredevil, Bullseyes, special. Um, and then you've got some Battlefield items as well, which is new to me and something I've not seen before in this game. So that can be quite cool, that's going to make it quite interesting. And then how to play if it's a free for all and team play 2v2. So, and then obviously on the back, a nice little reference guide for the icons. This game is very easy to play if you'd learn it, it's very, very simple to pick up. Um, and then, of course, the standard um, health dials that we get with every game. And you can't see on the camera, but if I move this up a little bit, there's items at the bottom here which you've got defense or shield, uh, attack or shield for two. Plus two, attack or shield for plus one. These are scheme things. Um, not 100% sure what they do actually, but it's nice to see. This is a health one, a map, and a phone book. Uh, phone box it looks like. So maybe you can call in help or get people to help. I don't know. Not really sure what they're going to do. Oh, it says on the back. Nice. First aid, you recover two health and you draw a card. The map on your next attack this turn, you can target in any space. And the phone, you choose one card in your discard pile and return it to your hand. That sounds really good. So they sound like really fun additions to the game without adding too much extra complexity or discipline. Or then they can go on the board in these spaces, as you can see. So I really like that. It's uh, mix things up a little bit more for this set, make it a bit more interactive. Different spaces for your different things, so you've got to go around and get them. Um, and that make will make the game a bit more interesting. Make it a bit more dynamic. Make the movement a lot more interesting as well. You need to move. So first off, let's have a little look at Daredevil. This figure, as with all the figures, they're really great. They're always got a bit of dye on them so that they've got some shadow and shading. He's got his two fighting sticks. And he's got his double D on his chest there, if you can see that. Hopefully it'll zoom in enough for you to be able to see. And he looks really funky. Yeah, he looks ready to fight. So yeah, a really cool one, standing on a kind of manhole or something. Um, and then we've got our dial things with the counters and stuff. Um, and here is Bullseye. As you can see in his right hand, he's got like a deck of cards, it looks like. Um, and nothing in his left hand. He looks really cool as well. He's got a utility belt and all the stuff you'd expect. And then Electra as well. Electra's got a kind of famous headband and bandana thing on, um, two kind of swords, and a flailing kind of dress. Um, she looks ready to have a little sword fight. They're all really good little miniatures as expected from these games. A lot of little details and look really cool. I'm going to open up the cards and see what the cards do and what these guys have got special and try and then learn what is interesting about each one of them. So let's have a little look. I don't actually need my knife for this because they're already got quite a nice deck. There, there well, it says during combat, if you have two or fewer cards in your hand, you can blind boost your attack or defense. 
blind boosting is when you pull cards off the top of the deck and then you just flip it over and use the boost value there for your movement i think so if you've got two or fewer cards in your hand you can blind boost your attack or defense so that means you'll get that added onto your attack or defense so he can be good with less cards which is quite interesting and it says if you have other during combat effects you can choose the order and uh he is a melee fighter which makes sense because it wouldn't make sense for him to be ranged with his lack of sight and he's got 17 health which is fairly high and then cards like during combat you may blind boost this attack um so it's not brilliant on its own it's only two but you can blind boost it to increase it after combat if you lost you deal two damage to the fighter adjacent to daredevil that's quite good um attack of four during combat if you have no cards in your deck the value of this card is eight so if that's your last card that is an eight instead of a four that's really nice and after combat you shuffle the card and the four top cards of your discard pile into your deck so not only are you getting extra eight attack there you're getting four cards back into your deck and you get to shuffle then that card in as well so that's really good um because obviously when you get your deck running out you lose two health every time you can't draw a card and you've got some cards at the same there with uh, a grappling hook and it says move daredevil up two spaces fairly common one another three of discard the top card of your deck recover health equal to its boost value that's good get some health back um you've got some three of these breather Choose an attack, defense, or versatile card from your discard pile and return it to your hand. So again, nice. He's got really good versatility, it looks. He seems like he's going to be a really cool character to play. Um, this uh, scheme has moved Daredevil up to four spaces. He can move through opposing fighters and deal one damage to each opposing de fighter Daredevil moves through. So if you've got someone with lots of little minions and you can jump through them all, you could wipe them all out in a couple of moves with that card. Could be really useful. And then a uh, versatile card with... Cancel all effect on your opponent's cards. So we have them in quite a lot of the decks. But they're quite nice. So he seems like he's going to be quite a good all-rounder, I think. From what I've seen there. Let's have a look at Bullseye. And then we'll go on to Electra's after that. So Bullseye says he can attack from up to five spaces away. And he ignores zones. So that's really, really good. Uh, he's ranged. But... Five spaces is quite far. A lot of, most people can only move three spaces. So if you attack and then move, you may be able to outsmart people and get away so they can't attack you at all in their turn, depending on what board you're on. Um, he's got two of these attacks, which says immediately if you already want to combat this turn, ignore the value of your opponent's card. So if you attack twice and you use that on second time and you won the first time, you get to guaranteed four damage, um, which is good. Two of these, I'm better and I'll prove it. If you already want to combat this turn, the value of this card is six instead. So again, these can be four or six if you want to combat already. Uh, there's three of these, oh no, there's four of these, uh, I never miss cards. You may boost this attack. If you don't boost this attack, draw a card. So depending on the situation, you might want more cards or you might want to do more damage. I'd say mainly I'd go for more damage, but it depends on where you're at, I guess. You've got three of these cards, arrogant but effective. You're considered to have won the combat, move bullseye up to two spaces. So even after you've won, if, you, if after you've done combat, if you didn't win, you can still have that as considered to have won, which means you get some of your boosts at the top that we just went through. Uh, this one for two attack, after combat, move bullseye up to one space, draw a card and gain an action. So even though you're not doing a great attack, you might want to do that first as a bluff attack to give them like it, it, the idea that you're going to do loads of damage and then they use their best defense card. Then you do one of these cards and give a whacking attack to actually do a lot of damage. So he's going to be a, a bit of a powerhouse damager. And he seems really good range as well. Study the target. Draw two cards. If you won combat this turn, draw an additional card and you gain an action. So if you've won the combat with one of these, got an action. Um, then you can... Well, where are these? Then you can gain another action. Get some cards, gain an action. So he seems really useful. Already I think he looks really powerful. Uh, this one says, if you already want to combat this turn, your opponent discards a card. That could be useful. I guess it's at random, but there's three of these tactical retreats. Place balls in a space that shares no zones with his current space. Again, good for moving out the way, I guess. 
Uh, this one, Bullseye Feint, cancel all effect on your opponent's cards. That's quite common. Um, th this one, Master Strategist, Strategist, move Bullseye exactly four spaces. He may move through opposing fighters. Again, running away. Nice. Um, Bullseye's Ricochet. If the opposing fighter was not defeated, deal one damage to a fighter in the opposing fighter's zone. So, yeah, you can take out some minions there, maybe some of their followers or whatever they're called. And then there's two of these cards. If you start your turn in your current space, the value of this card is five instead. So if you're next to someone already and you want to attack them without moving, you get a five attack there, which is really good. So that is great. He seems like he's got a lot of really good cards. I think he seems very powerful. And so far they've both looked quite good. And it looks like, I think these are Electras. Um, these little discs that look like kind of, um, I don't know if you can see them. Get on the camera. They kind of look like little ninjas, or um, oh, actually, that would be the kind of heads are quite dark and they're like ninja warriors or something. So, there's four of those for their electors, I think. And let's have a look at what our cards say. So, he's got a sidekick called the hand, and there's four health on that. So, I think that might be a stack that goes around as one, but I'm not sure. I'll have to properly read up on what it does and find that out. Um, it says the first time Electra would be defeated, remove her and all hand from the board. She is not defeated. At the start of the next turn, you resurrect her. So she's got seven health, but she can die and then be resurrected. The hand has got four health. Uh, oh, there's a different card for her elect uh, resurrected form. So that's something I've not come across yet, but maybe I've not opened enough packs, but that's really cool. So she starts with 7 health, and her Resurrection has got 9 health. So altogether she's got 16 health. The Hand again has 4 of them. It says when she resurrects, flip your health dial, shuffle your discard pile into your deck, place Electra and all Hand back onto the board, with each fighter in a different zone. You must resolve effects with the Hand symbol on it now. So you ignore them when you've got this one, and then when you flip, after she's died once, you get the stuff with the hand symbol. So Electra's, their size is just four, quite a strong, both attack and defend. The intercept card, you'll only get that when she's been resurrected. It says, um, it's quite a strong three defense, but it also says, during combat, you may reveal a card named Psy from your hand. I like this one. If you do, the value of this card is five instead. Uh, so she's getting more stuff when she's resurrected. She's getting more power. Um, she's a little bit stronger. Electra takes no damage instead on this if it's Resurrection. And it's a 6 attack, which is strong. After combat, Electra takes 3 damage. And if you're Resurrected, it says Electra takes no damage. So that can be really strong after you've been Resurrected and lost a bit of health. Whirlwind is only 2, but it says after combat, you deal 1 damage to each adjacent opposing fighter. This eye thing, Mesmerize. Choose an opponent and look at their hand, gain 1 action. You can also choose a card for them to discard once if you're resurrected. Cloaked in Shadow immediately cancels all the effects of the other cards, which is quite a common one, but then if you're in resurrection, it says move Electra up to three spaces after combat. So that can be really good for dodging and ducking. Um, you've got these two hands of red. Um, return the defeat hand to a space in Electra's zone. These are Electra again. Electra may swap spaces with a hand. If she does, the hand is now the defender. Not 100% sure what that means, but we'll see. Oh, yeah, so when you're defending on a spot, the hand will take her space and then she won't get damaged. The hand will just much really die if it gets hit. You got the fist here for the hand. You may deal one damage to your attacking fighter. If you do, return the card to your hand and gain an action. Could be quite good. And then these level threes for any. Um, place your fighter in any space. Uh, after combat, so that's a versatile one. So most of the cards are all for Electra. There is only a few cards at the back, as you can see. These two hand cards and these two any cards, are the only ones that will work with the hand and um, do things for them. This one is the hand. It's you may deal one damage to your attacking fighter. If you do return this card to your hand and gain an action, and so obviously you'll lose the hand most probably because I think they're one HP normally. The followers um and this one plays your fighter in any space that seems quite good as well and um, they all seem quite powerful 
from what I've seen, but I haven't tried yet, I would say Bullseye looks maybe the strongest. But I think Electra looks really cool and really strong after she's died. And Daredevil looks good as well. Um, so I'm really looking forward to trying this one and to see whether I'm right or wrong and how it actually plays out and who is the best and who's the strongest. So really looking forward to that. Um, let me know if you want to see any more from this or uh, want any more close-ups of anything. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, I've been Dan, this is DB Games. Uh, please subscribe if you like the video. It really, really helps us out. And uh, I will catch you on the next video.